will start. Okay, so we're gonna start lying down on your back. Oh, and we'll take a few moments here to settle in. So settling into your space, settling into your practice, And just be comfortable on your back. So I like to have my knees bent with my feet on the floor because that just gives me a little bit more support in my low back. And then just let your arms be by your sides. I like to have my palms face up. We have a lot of nerve endings at the end of our fingertips. So if you have the palms up, you're not sending messages from the nerves to the brain. So just another way to quiet down. Let your eyes be closed and just check in. So check in with yourself. Notice how you're feeling. Notice what you're feeling. And I also like to notice where you're feeling. So where you're feeling any tightness or tension physically in the body. And then also where you may be holding on to stress or anxiety or just emotional tension. I just want you to notice that. So some people carry tension in their shoulders. I know when I get anxious, I can feel it deep in the pit of my stomach. I also tend to clench my teeth when I'm feeling stressed or anxious. So just check in. And then use your breath to lessen the intensity of whatever it is you're feeling. So that's a way to process your feelings, just using your breath. So inhaling through the nose and exhaling out of the mouth. So I've really been thinking about <clears throat> processing feelings in the moment. For example, urges or cravings or what you feel you want immediately. So when you have that kind of a feeling, just pause and breathe. You want to lessen the intensity. So here, let's hug the knees into the chest and rock left to right. <clears throat> we'll make some circles with the knees in one direction and then the other. And then we're just gonna lift the feet up towards the ceiling. Your legs do not need to go straight. You can have a bend in the knees and your arms are gonna reach back behind you. So the tops of the hands are reaching for the floor. Your elbows do not need to be straight. Just pause here, point and flex your feet. Make some circles with the ankles. Feel open through the chest and open through the collarbones. We're gonna take a deep full breath in here. And then as you exhale, hug the knees into the chest. <sighs> Inhale through the nose, reach the arms up and back and the feet lift and then exhale, hug the knees in. One more time, just like that. Inhale, arms reach, feet lift and exhale, hug the knees in. We're gonna let both feet come down to the floor and you're gonna reach for your yoga strap. <clears throat> so your strap is looped together Right foot is coming into the loop and you're gonna take the loop behind your, over your head and behind your back, right above your shoulder blades. So right underneath your arms. So the goal here is to have your foot lifted. Don't worry about the knee. So if you're trying to straighten your leg and your foot is down low, then you're better off having your foot lifted with a bent knee. 
You just want to reach your heel up towards the ceiling and feel length in the back of your right leg. The left leg can go straight. If at any time when the, straight, the leg is straight, if this is uncomfortable on your back, then you can bend the knee again. So again, arms out to the sides, palms up, eyes are closed. If you're not using a yoga strap and you're just using a belt or something else, then just hold your hands gently on each end of the strap. But I find it super helpful to have the arms free so that you can relax your shoulders and just allow your breath to flow with ease. Breathing in through the nose and out of the mouth. Allowing your breath to tell your brain to relax. And then allow your body to let go of tension. Use your inhale to take in positive energy and exhale to just let go. And just enjoy the pause here. We'll take a deep breath in. And then as you exhale, we're going to soften the right knee. We're going to reach the right foot over to the left. So you want to take your right hand maybe on your right hip just to kind of remind it to stay down. You can press it forward a little bit. Relax your right shoulder. Again, your right leg does not need to be straight and the foot does not need to go far over. You are feeling your IT band. That's the outside of your right leg. If you want to feel a little bit less, then soften your knee. And if you want to feel a little bit more, reach your heel away from the hip and then turn your toes down so they go a little bit lower than your heel. And then relax the whole area around your right hip. Let the breath fill up the chest and belly so that you can feel the rise and fall. Soft muscles around the face. Relaxed jaw. And a nice easy breath. Take a deep breath in. And then as you exhale, we're going to bring the right foot back up to the center. Bend your left knee so your left foot's on the floor. Take your right foot out of the strap and just cross your right ankle so it's resting on top of your left leg above the knee. If you're feeling that this is good for you right here, you could just take your right hand on your right knee and relax your hip. If you want to go a little deeper, you can scoot your left heel in closer to your seat and maybe lift up onto the tippy toes of your left foot. A little deeper is reaching for the back of your left thigh and a little deeper is holding on to your left shin. So you can decide where you want to be. Relax the shoulders. Maybe gently shift the shape of your legs left to right. And then pause a little bit over to the left and maybe draw your left knee in towards your left shoulder. And then just pause and breathe. So accepting your body right here in whatever pose that you're in, allow your breath to flow with ease as you let go of tightness and tension. Connecting to your breath so you can just stay right here. Take a 
full breath in. And then as you exhale, we're going to take the right foot down to the floor. Left foot is going to reach up towards the ceiling into the strap. So you might need to adjust tighter or looser depending on how this leg feels. Again, option to straighten the right leg. Arms can come by your sides, palms up, eyes closed, and then just pause. Completely relax your back. You want to lengthen and soften the back of your left leg. This will help release any tightness and tension in the low back. Also really good for circulation and your lymphatic system. Breathing in through the nose and out of the mouth. Take a full breath in, and then as you exhale, let's soften the left knee. You can take your right hand on the left hip just to help support it as you guide your left foot over to the right. It does not need to go far. So just see how you feel. Maybe your knee is super bent. That's okay too. Use the strap for support. If you want to Feel a little bit more, straighten the leg a little bit more, flex the foot and turn the toes down. If you need to soften, bend the knee. Maybe tighten the strap to give you a little bit more support. Relax through the chest and shoulders. So this is a very tight area in the body, especially if you sit a lot or if you're a runner. Having tight IT band, hamstring, and hips can lead to pain in your low back. So we're just trying to ease into the body and let go. And let's just pause. Take a full breath in, and then as you exhale, we're going to bring that left foot back to center. The right foot comes down to the floor, bent knee, and you're just going to let your left foot rest on top of the right leg above the knee. You can stay right here. You can take your left hand on your left knee. You can scoot your right heel in towards your seat, reach for the back of the thigh, or reach for the shin. Relax your shoulders. You can sway the legs left to right a little bit and then pause over to the right, drawing your right knee in towards your right shoulder. The hips hold a lot of emotional tightness and tension and stress. So use your breath here to just pause and process whatever it is that you're feeling. So an example I had last night of the pause and processing your feelings through just breathing is I'm not even a cake person, but I do love sugar and sweets. And my son made my favorite kind of cake last night, a yellow cake with chocolate fudge frosting. So I allow myself to have a piece of cake because I don't want to feel deprived. But then about an hour later, I felt like I needed another piece of cake. And it was like a strong physical urge that I had that I really, really wanted that piece of cake. So I just sat and I paused. I closed my eyes. I took some deep breaths. I felt in my body where I was having that urge. It was literally in my mouth and in my stomach. I wanted that cake so bad. But I paused and I was able to process through that urge. 
It only took like a minute. And then I was good. It was done. And I didn't have the piece of cake. Okay, let's slowly come out of this pose. Let your left foot come down. Let your right foot come down. Feet are about mat width apart. Gently winch away for your legs left to right. I'm telling you, the power of that pause and using your breath to process your feelings helps with everything. Any type of feeling that you're having. Urges, cravings. So just notice as you practice the power of that pause. When you pause in a pose and just be and soften, super powerful. All right, we're gonna let the legs come back to center. Hug your knees into the chest. Rock left to right a little bit. And then we're gonna rock to the left and press yourself up to sit. Moving the strap out of the way. We're gonna come on to hands and knees. Now, if you happen to have a folded blanket or a towel, you can use that for support, especially if you're not used to being on your knees and you're new to yoga. So you can place the, knee, the blanket under your knees. You can place the blanket on top of your lap for support, or you can place the blanket under your feet, or you don't have to use the blanket. We're gonna start with parallel knees. So your knees are parallel. Your hips are sitting down towards your heels. You can also put a blanket underneath your thighs here, between your thighs and your shins. We're gonna make a pillow with your hands and just let your forehead rest down. If you can't reach your hands, then make stack fists and let your forehead reach down. So you want to let your forehead ground down here so you can relax your neck, shoulders, and upper back. Let your chest feel like it's melting down towards the mat. Pause here and breathe. Just checking in. So we're gonna get into the shoulders a little bit here. Let's take the hands out in front. If your head does not touch the floor, you can always put a block under your forehead, your floor head, under your forehead. <laughs> or you can just tuck the chin and let your head be not on the ground, but I prefer to have my head grounded down. So the hands are down, your forearms and elbows are lifted. If you want to go deeper, tent your fingertips so that your palms are lifted and then let your head drop down this should feel deep in your shoulders and your upper back between your shoulder blades when you breathe in feel your lungs expand into the back into the side ribs into the belly and then when you exhale, just relax down. Take a full breath in and a full breath out. We're gonna walk forward here and let your forearms come down to the floor. So you're on your knees, forearms are down on the floor. Now we've been working on forearm plank for a while now. And I did call it the Silvestro challenge. And I think some of you have heard that story. And so we're working up to three minutes and we're at the two minute mark now. We did a minute and 45 seconds, I think last week. And I think we're gonna just shoot for two minutes. You do not have to stay in a forearm plank for two minutes. We're just gonna work on it. So I'm just gonna show you a full forearm plank is stepping one foot back then the other. If this hurts your back, you're gonna lift your hips. If you need more support, knees are down, tops of the feet press down into the floor. Your shoulders are relaxed. Okay, Alexa, please set a two minute timer. Hmm. 
Okay, so find your pose, find that forearm plank. We're just digging deep here for your inner strength. We have been going through a pandemic for almost a year. You probably never in a million years thought that you would be in this position in your life right now. To be having to wear a mask, to not be able to see people. But we're doing it. We're getting through it. Because we're strong, resilient, brave. So I want you to feel your strength here. And a lot of times you don't even realize how strong you really are until you have to be. So when you put yourself in a pose that is so challenging, you need to dig deep to find your strength. See if you can just stick with it. If you need to come down, totally come down. You don't need to hurt yourself. I want you to breathe with ease, just like when we were breathing when we were laying down on our backs. Breathe with ease, in through the nose and out of the mouth. Relax your neck, relax your shoulders, feel the strength in your core. Having a strong core is really important. I focus a lot on back health. This is how you're going to protect your back from injury and protect it from stress. So your belly is drawn in, it's nice and strong. The muscles around your spine are strong and engaged. Your hands are relaxed. Your face is relaxed. Relaxing the neck. We're pausing and breathing. Use your breath to feel what you feel. In through the nose and out of the mouth. Drop the knees, walk back with your hands, child's pose. Alexa, stop timer, please. Pause here. You can let your arms come by your sides, top to the hands by your feet, and just roll left to right with your forehead and your hips, and relax here. Let your shoulders round forward. I never let you have your shoulders by your ears except for right here. Let your shoulders come by your ears. Relax your arms. Pause and breathe. So now that you have found your core, we're gonna try to keep it engaged when we come into some other poses here where we're focusing on balance and strength. So let's come up onto hands and knees here. The knees are underneath your hips. Wrists are gonna be under your shoulders or about an inch in front. I like to have my hands a little bit more in front just to take the pressure off the wrists. Fingers are spread nice and wide. We're going to curl the toes under so you're stretching out the bottoms of your feet and your toes. Take a deep breath in as you drop your belly. Soften your elbows. Lift your chin and look forward. That's your inhale. And then exhale. Tuck your chin. Push the floor down with your hands. Try to reach the ceiling with the center of your back and press the tops of your feet down. Inhaling again. You can let the eyes be closed and just ride the wave of your breath here. Inhaling and exhaling. One more just like that right here. Inhale and exhale. We're gonna come back to center you're going to take your left foot straight back, toes down on the floor. Take the back of your right hand and rest it on your low back for a moment. And then I want you to pull your belly in so much that your back lifted your hand. Keeping your back just like that, lift your left foot only a few inches off the floor. If you lift high, you'll notice that your back will drop down. We want to keep it more engaged here. So the foot does not need to lift far. Then let's take the right hand forward. Relax your shoulder, does not need to be shoulder height. We're focusing more on your core and your back here. 
So your left hip and your right shoulder are relaxed. Take a deep breath in and a full breath out. And just feel what you feel here in this pose. Finding balance. If you're wobbling, that's okay. Different muscles are kicking in to find your balance and find your strength. We're going to drop the right hand down, drop your left toes behind you with a straight leg. Pivot your right foot off of your mat to the right. Roll to the arch of your left foot. Lift the left hand up towards the ceiling. So feel grounded from your left hand to your right hand. If you want to go deeper, you can try to lift your left foot off the floor. You don't have to. If you want to try to challenge yourself a little bit more, you can take your right ankle and cross it over your left ankle. I'm not going to do that on this side. I have a pinched nerve in my shoulder, so I'm not able to wait there. So just pausing here to breathe, opening up the chest, lifting the hips. Belly is drawn in, breathing with ease, not holding your breath. Beautiful, deep breath in, and then exhale. Let's come on down. Knees come to the floor, sit your hips back, and we're gonna let your hands rest by your feet. Head drops down. Pause here and breathe. Really relax your shoulders and your wrists. Your forehead is grounding down. If anybody gets migraines or tension headaches, child's pose is a great pose for that. You can really let go of the tension that you're holding in the back of the head and the neck by grounding down through the forehead. And just pause here and breathe. Take a deep breath in and a full breath out. Let's come back up onto hands and knees. Reset yourself up here so the knees are under your hips, wrists are a little bit in front of your shoulders, and we're gonna take three breaths here. Inhaling, curl the toes under, drop the belly, lift the chin. This is so good for your spine, moving the spinal fluid nice and slow. In, exhaling, round the back. You want to create space in between the bones and the back. Inhaling and exhaling. One more time, just like that. Inhale. And exhale. Coming back to center. Crown of the head is forward. Tailbone is back. Right foot is going to be down on the floor. Take the back of your left hand, rest it on your low back, and then pull your belly in. You'll notice that your hand will lift. Keep your hand where it is. Lift your right foot. So keep that belly drawn in a lot. Right at the ribs here. Then you can take your left hand forward. So your left hand is about halfway between the floor and shoulder height. Same with your foot. It's halfway between the floor and hip height. Draw your belly in and up. Pause here and breathe. Lengthen through the neck and spine. Take a deep breath in, and then as you exhale, left hand comes down, right toes go straight down behind you. You're going to pivot your left foot to the left, roll to the arch of your right foot, press your right foot flat as you reach your right hand up towards the ceiling. You can stay right here, or you can lift your right foot. Or you can cross your left ankle in front of your right ankle. Hips are tilted forward and up. So your hips are stacked right on top of each other. 
Your shoulders are stacked on top of each other. Try to lift your right wrist a little higher. Your belly is drawn in. The muscles around your back are strong. Take a full deep breath in. And then as you exhale, let's come on down. Again, that resting pose, that child's pose. Really important to take after a pose like that so that you can relax your shoulders, relax your wrists, and reconnect to your breathing. Forehead is down. You can make a pillow with your hands under your forehead if you need to. Really relax the shoulders here. Relax your neck. And breathe deeply. Okay, we're going to come onto hands and knees for a moment, and then you're going to step your left foot forward up between your hands. This is where blocks are super handy. So you can have your hands on blocks. The left knee is right over your left ankle, and your right knee is going to scoop pretty far back, and then your hips are going to weigh down. So like there's weights in your hips, and they're moving straight down down. So you're getting deep into your left hip joint and your right hip flexor. Lifting your chest, look forward, take a deep breath in, and then as you exhale, tuck the chin round the back and just pull your hips back. Good. Inhale, bend the left knee, drop the right hip, look forward. Exhale, pull back. One more time, just like that. Inhale. And exhale. Coming back to center here. Hip is dropped below. Your right hand is going to stay where it is. If you're not twisting, you're going to take your left hand forward. If you're okay to twist, you're going to turn your belly Rib cage and chest to the left, but keep your left knee right over your left ankle and we'll reach the left hand up. Soft. You don't have to have it straight. You can have a soft elbow. Just kind of opening like a wing here. Sink a little deeper in your hips. Pause here. And breathe. Try to pull your left hip in towards your right hip. Beautiful. Take a deep breath in and then as you exhale, we're slowly going to let your left hand come down and we're going to switch. So just slide your left foot back, step your right foot forward. Hips are going to sink low again. So you might need to scoot your left knee back a little bit. The right knee is right over your right ankle. Chest is opening forward, looking forward. Take a deep breath in and then exhale. Just pull your hips back, tuck the chin, round the back, lengthen the back of your right leg. Inhale, breathe deeply. Exhale, pull back. One more time, just like that. Inhale. So moving with the breath is a form of meditation. It helps us stay connected to the present moment and exactly what we're doing. Let's come back to forward, inhaling, pause. Left hand stays where it is. If you're not twisting, your right hand goes forward. If you're able to twist, you're gonna turn your belly, chest, and rib cage to the right and reach your right hand up towards the ceiling. Soft, soft elbow, soft shoulder, strong legs. Really draw your right hip in. Keep your right knee over your right ankle. Push down through the big toe, the ball mound of your big toe. 
not your pinky toe. Nice, take a deep breath in. And then as you exhale, we're gonna come down and we're gonna switch. Right foot goes back, left foot goes forward. So this time you're gonna lift your right knee. If you need to keep it down, then keep it down. But curl your right toes under, lift your right knee. Check your feet. Make sure you're on railroad tracks, not a balance beam. So you wanna have hip width between your feet. Strong legs. So strong that you could lift your hands up. Strong legs. Your right hand is gonna stay down. Maybe just tented fingers barely even pressing down. Left hand can reach forward or turn. Belly, rib cage, chest to the left, reach your left hand up. And then just pause here and breathe. If you need to drop that right knee, drop it down. Drawing your left hip in. Your left knee stays over the left ankle. Try not to roll onto your left pinky. Nice and strong. Where's your core? Find it, use it. Take one more full breath in, and then as you exhale, left hand comes down, right knee comes down. We're just gonna switch. Drag the left foot back, right foot goes forward. Curl your left toes under, lift your left knee. So hip width between your feet, strong legs. Hands are not doing much here. This is all in the legs. Your left hand stays where it is. Right hand can reach forward or to the right and turn. This is really grounding down into our hips. You are not only strengthening the muscles around your hips and your knees, but you're really working on bone density here. We're pressing down with the legs and getting super strong in the bones. And then able to breathe with ease. Take a full deep breath in. And then as you exhale, right hand comes down, left knee comes down, switch. Right foot goes back, left foot comes forward. Okay, this time, if you're using blocks, you might want them to be a little bit higher. You're going to curl your right toes under, lift your right knee, scoot your right foot forward a bit, and then straighten your left leg, if you can. Maybe you just go a little straighter. Your back heel is lifted. All 10 toes are pointed forward. If you want to try to push your right heel towards the mat, you can, but you don't have to. Pause here. Feel your chest lengthening your spine lengthening. If you would like to go deeper, your right hand stays where it is, left hand can reach forward or twist to the left. Reach your left hand up. So we're just adding on, building up a little bit. Able to breathe with ease, super important. Relax your jaw, relax your face. Take a deep breath in, and then as you exhale, left hand comes down. An easier switch here is stepping your right foot forward, then left foot back. So just coming right into the other side here. Two straight legs, pyramid pose. If your right knee needs to bend, it's totally fine. If your left heel is off the floor a lot, it's totally fine. Just feel your hips moving back and your spine and the front of your body lengthening. Left hand stays where it is. Right hand can reach towards the front of the room or turn to the right. So notice if your right hip kicks out to the right a little bit. See if you can pull it back in. You can even take your right hand on your hip and help guide it back in towards the center. Lengthening your spine as you gently twist. Nothing forced here. Nice 
Nice big wingspan with the arms. Nice strong solid base with the legs. Take a deep breath in and then as you exhale, right hand comes down, bend your right knee so you can bring your left foot forward. I'm going to step back a little bit. Okay. Your hands are on blocks in front of you if you need them, or they can be on the floor. Knees are soft here. Let your head hang. Soft elbows, and just pause here. We're gonna take a few deep breaths moving together. As you inhale, you're gonna lift your chest so it's parallel to the floor. Fingertips can be on the blocks. Legs can go a little straighter as you push your hips back. Maybe you have your hands on your legs if you don't have blocks. So this is the inhale. Crown of the head is forward. You're like the letter L. And then as you exhale, ragdoll. Soft knees, soft arms, soft upper body. Hang. Inhale again. Lengthen. Make a lot of space in the back of the body and the front of the body. And then exhale, fold and melt down. Let's do one more time, just like that. Inhale, lengthen. And exhale, let go. Okay. So, you're on your feet, hip width apart. You have your hands in front of you about the length from your hip to your armpit. So that's about a foot in front of you. Your left foot is gonna stay where it is and your right foot is gonna step back in the air. So the foot is flexed, all five toes pointed down. Soften your left knee, but strengthen your left hip. You can stay right here or you can take your left hand forward or turn belly, chest, and rib cage to the left as you reach your left hand up towards the ceiling. Powerful legs, strong inner thighs, strong hips. Just see what you can do here. See if you're holding your breath. Breathe with ease. In through the nose and out of the mouth. <sighs> nice, slowly, left hand comes down, right foot comes down. Hang, you can hold on to opposite elbows. Deep bend in the knees, let your belly rest on your thighs. No strain in the low back here. Let your head hang. You can roll your head left to right and make some circles. Really release the neck and upper back. And then coming back up to a lengthened spine, the letter L, the left hand, I'm sorry, the left foot is gonna go back. So left foot goes back, belly in. Nice strong right hip, feel free to soften that right knee. Your right hand can lift just off of the block or the mat or you can turn your belly, chest, and face to the right as you lift your right hand up towards the ceiling. Engage your inner thighs and your hips. Your back foot is flexed like you're trying to step on the wall behind you. Arms are spread. Allow your breath to flow in through the nose, and out of the mouth. Notice how you feel here. Notice what you feel. Take a deep breath in, and then as you exhale, right hand comes down, left foot comes down, hang in a forward bend. So I'm going to turn so that I'm facing the, sh the long end of my mat. We're going to just walk your feet wide. So you're
your feet are going wide, this should feel good on your inner thighs and outer thighs right here. You can have blocks for your hands if you need to. I just want you to lengthen your spine, your feet are parallel, knees can be bent here if you can't get them straight, no worries. We are just going to move with your breath here. Right hand stays down. As you breathe in, left hand reaches up towards the ceiling, turn, and then exhale down. Inhale to the right, lengthen through the spine and your back, and then melt down, you exhale. Inhale to the left, exhale down. Inhale right, lengthen, lift. Exhale down, relax. Inhale left. Exhale down. Inhale right. Exhale down. Two more times. Inhale, turn your body. Exhale down. Inhale. And exhale. Pause here. Heel toe your feet towards each other with the knees bent. Move your block. Hands come down. Bring one knee down, then the other. And then come onto your left hip. Send your feet to the front. Soles of your feet come together. Have a really big diamond here. So your heels are really far away. Hands on your shins, inhale, lift, exhale, fold. Don't worry how far you fold. It might not be far at all. All I want you to do is close your eyes and relax. Let your head release your neck. And then release your shoulders. Relax your back. Let go of any tightness or tension left in the hips and thighs. And then just breathe with ease in through the nose and out of the mouth. You can tuck your chin Feel the length in your spine. And then when you're ready, let's slowly come back up. And you're gonna make your way down onto your back. Hug the knees into the chest. Rocking left to right. Both feet come down to the floor. You're going to either let both knees just gently drop over to the right. Or if you'd like to go a little deeper than that, you can take your left thigh and cross it over your right thigh. Take your hips and scoot them over to the left about an inch so that when you drop your legs to the right, your tailbone is lined up with your neck. Just a nice way to protect your back. This should feel really good. We did a lot of work with the legs and the hips and grounding down. We lengthened the spine. We twisted, relax the shoulders and chest. So just take a moment here to breathe. You can turn your head over your left shoulder if you'd like. Take a full deep breath in and a full breath out. Bring the legs
legs back to center as you breathe out. Uncross them if they're crossed, even out your hips. And then you're either just letting your legs drop to the left or right thigh crosses over the left thigh. Scoot your hips over to the right and then let your legs drop to the left. You can turn your head over your right shoulder. Feel the ease in your low back here. So hopefully this feels really good. You can feel your chest and belly move as you breathe. Your breath is so powerful and when you learn to work with your breath and use your breath, it's amazing how much control you have over your emotions and your thoughts just by using your breath. We'll take a deep breath in and then as you exhale, we'll bring the legs back to center, uncross, hips back to center, knees draw in. And then from here, we're gonna prepare for Shavasana, final relaxation pose. So just being comfortable like at the beginning of the practice. You can lay on your back with your feet down and your knees bent. You can let your knees touch. You can let your legs go straight. You can put something under your knees. You should be warm and cozy. So, Final relaxation pose, super important to let your body absorb your practice. So again, palms are up, eyes are closed, body is still. And then just breathe. You can use your breath whatever you want to lessen the intensity of what you're feeling. When you want to process an emotion or an urge. When you want to feel more present and grounded. When you want to feel more calm and relaxed. power of the breath can be life changing. And just pause. If everyone took a pause before they sent that angry email or that snippy text, <laughs> or responded to someone that you care about that's annoying you, if we all just took that pause, you may react very differently than you would have before the pause. Just thinking about that. So when you practice yoga and you put your body into a shape. It takes a little bit to get there, line yourself up, get there. But then once you're there, you can just pause, breathe, feel. And that's the practice of the pause. And the practice of breathing with ease. And then using those tools in your everyday life, not just on your mat. Eveline mentioned before the practice that you just do the practice and then let the magic happen. So that magic will occur on the mat, off the mat. 
just might need to pause to notice it. Gently roll the back of the head left to right. Move your fingers and your toes. And then taking your time, moving your body gently and slowly, you'll transition out of Shavasana and then we'll all meet together seated. So take your time to come up. And seated in any way that is comfortable for you. You might need to sit up on something. You don't have to sit with the legs crossed. You can just have your knees bent in front of you. You can have your legs over to one side. We're not staying here long. We're just pausing for a moment. Eyes are closed. The right hand comes over the heart, the left hand on top of the right hand. And remember that we are all connected. We are all here on this planet with each other, but much more importantly, we're here for each other. Let's take the palms together in front of your heart center to honor your practice and honor yourself for showing up, maybe even trying something new and being open-minded. And enjoy this beautiful Sunday. Namaste.